Hey there folks, my name is Luke. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Today, this is all about overcoming your fears in the outdoors, or more specifically, the fears, the elements, the negative possibilities which you may face when you're out getting some dirt time. This is a Backpacking Basics episode. Every single month, I receive handfuls of emails from individuals who talk about the fears which they may face when they go out on a backpacking adventure. Now folks, most of those fears have a little bit of common sense to them. There are things that you have to worry about. There are risks out there in the forest, on the trails, and so on. But the thing is, most of those risks can be negated through gear, knowledge, and experience. With that being the case, everyone, in this episode, we will talk about those risks. We will talk about how to minimize those risks so that you can go out and have a great adventure. Most people worry about things which are based on common sense. You can get lost, you can get hurt, you can get attacked by an animal. But as you gain an experience, you will quickly realize that those issues really aren't issues if you know what you're doing. Once you've gained that experience, you will discover that there really isn't anything to worry about out there in the forest. So let me ask you all this. What do people email me the most about? What are they most concerned about? Well, I will go ahead and tell you. Snakes, bears, bugs. Right there, there you have it. Those are the big three. And every single year, I receive hundreds of emails about them. Out of those three, let's talk about bears first. Holy crap, there's a bear, guys. Yeah, get out of here. I live here in the mountains of North Carolina, where this is bear country. I'm almost 40 years old. I've lived here almost my entire life. I did spend some time down in the Everglades in Florida, and I spent some time at St. Thomas. But for over 30 years, I have lived here in bear country, backpacking, camping, bushcrafting, and so on. And I can tell you folks that I've never, ever had an issue with a bear, ever. Even after hundreds of encounters throughout my life, I've never had an issue. For the most part, you will not have any issues with bears. If you're hiking along on a trail, you're being silent, you're tiptoeing through the woods, there's a good possibility that you will walk up upon a bear. Maybe it's a mom, maybe she's with her cubs, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be a possibility. That's why when you're out on the trail, it's good to make some noise. If you're with some friends, you're talking, having a good time, the odds are that you will scare away just about everything in the forest. Now, there will be occasions where you're hiking along, you're tired, no one's talking, and you will come across a bear. All that you have to do is be loud, be in charge, puff yourself up nice and big, make yourself look intimidating, and the bear will take off. That's really how it goes 99% of the time. I cannot begin to tell you how many mama bears I've encountered with her cubs who has just turned around and disappeared, leaving those cubs behind. Now, when a mom does that, you do have to keep in mind that the mom's really not gone. She's very close by. She's not going to leave her cubs. So the best thing to do is back up, go around, do whatever you have to do, right? Give those bears plenty of time to get out of Dodge, to get away from you, in other words, if you haven't heard that saying before. I have bears over there, and I'm not going to get scared. Where? Oh, guys, there's a cub. Oh, there's some cubs. There's some bears right there. There's a cub. All right, let's time to go. Let's go. Gotta be loud enough to let them know that we're here. <laughs> go nice and slow. They're taking off the other way. Yep. All right, so we just had a bear encounter. Let's keep walking. Let's get out of here. Let mom have some space. There was mom and two cubs coming down the hill, actually right at us. On occasion, you will come across a bear. That's just how it goes. You know, the thing is, folks, they don't really want to eat you. If you are in bear country, the odds are you will come across a bear. Maybe they're up in a tree. Maybe they're walking across the trail. Who knows what? It's absolutely fine. Give them space. Be loud and in charge. They will disappear. You're going to be A-OK. -okay. The next area that you really need to focus on when it comes to bears is your camp, namely in regards to your food. You do not want food left inside of your tent. You do not want food left out in your camp. You do not want to spill food on your clothes, on the ground, or anything like that. That is so incredibly important. Most people who have issues with bears invite them in by leaving food out. You have to remember that a bear smells like, I don't know, 2,000 times better than we do. So if there's food inside of your camp, food on your clothes, a piece of gum inside of your backpack, they can smell it. That's why you need to use a bear canister. That's why you need to use a bear bag, whatever it is that you like to use. I've had good experiences with both 
in my 30 plus years in the outdoors, I've never had a bear steal my bear bag. I've never had a bear steal my bear canister. I've had bears come into camp just walking through. You wake up in the morning and you find a big old paw print in the mud right in front of your tent. That's a little scary. It is just how it is. There are animals out in the forest. That's life. I think the most important thing to keep in mind is, is that the bear wants absolutely nothing to do with you. The forest isn't full of man-eating bear, so you really don't have to worry about that. You know, there are those rare occasions where bear attacks happen, they do weird things, but for the most part, it's a non-issue. It's something that you really, really don't have to worry about. All that you need to be focused on, really, is common sense areas. Picking up the food, don't leave food inside of your tent. You know, you can leave food inside of your tent and a raccoon comes and tears a hole in your tent to go get it. Don't keep food inside of your tent. That's the biggest key here. If you're truly worried about bears, you can carry protection with you. They make bear spray. Uh, you can always get your carry and conceal permit, stuff like that. Open carry if your state allows it, like mine does. Do whatever it is that you gotta do to feel secure, to feel safe. As you go out, as you adventure, you will discover very quickly, bears are not an issue. Not at all, not if you're smart. You know, folks, something to keep in mind, let's take Yellowstone National Park bear country for an example. Your chance of getting attacked by a bear is about one in three million. In fact, there have only been five bear-related fatalities in Yellowstone since the 1800s. Five of them. It's not an issue. Let's talk about the other critters, shall we? Snakes and bugs. From what I understand, every year, about 10 people die from snake bites and roughly 10 people die from insects. From scorpions, I think only one person each year dies from a sting. For the most part, you don't have to really worry about bugs or snakes. What you have to remember, folks, is that snakes are defensive. They're not typically very aggressive. So, watch where you stick your hands. Most people get struck on the hand, right? They go down and grab a piece of wood, they don't see what's underneath that rock, and they get bit. It's a defensive strike. Now the next area, of course, is on the leg. They get struck on the leg by passing by a rattlesnake, something like that. It rarely happens. I don't live too far away from locations that have rattlesnakes and copperheads. And the amount of strikes each year, you can count on two hands. It really is a rarity, even with the high number of snakes in those areas. I live very close to the Linville Gorge, which is home to rattlesnakes, copperheads. I go out there and explore all the time and folks, I can't tell you the last time I heard of someone even getting bit, getting struck. In recent memory, I can't even think of a death taking place there due to snakes or anything like that. My best advice for snakes and bugs is this, snakes first. Look at the trail when you're hiking, you know? If you can't see an area, be cautious and take a look. If you go to grab something, make sure that you can see all the way around that object. When it comes to bugs, use some good repellent. You really don't have anything to worry about there. Check your shoes in the morning if you leave them outside of the tent. You know, make sure to knock them out just in case something crawls inside. Most people keep their boots inside of the tent. That works just fine as well. You can always keep them outside and put them in a bag if you have to. Personally, I usually keep my boots outside. I've never had any issues. Some people do worry about getting cold in the outdoors. Typically, that concern comes from women. Women are just naturally colder than men. Maybe it's because of all the extra water in their bodies. I have no idea. But anyways, you don't have to worry about getting cold as long as you bring plenty of clothing and you have the right sleeping bag for the job. Make sure to check the temperatures for the area that you're going into and make sure that you have a good, well-known sleeping bag that can handle those temperatures. What I've discovered over the years after testing out hundreds and hundreds of sleeping bags from very expensive all the way down to very cheap and inexpensive typically, not always, but typically inexpensive and cheap sleeping bags, their temperature rating doesn't really match up in the real world. Yes, it says it's good down to zero. You might live at zero, but you're not going to be comfortable. It may say that you can be comfortable at 40 degrees and you're going to be freezing at 50. So make sure that you have a good sleeping bag. That's always very, very important. If you're concerned about being cold, bring extra clothing. You will discover real quick with your adventures through trial and error and experience, what works and what doesn't. And I'm talking about your gear, about your clothing, and so on. When it comes to your adventures, I always recommend that you start out slow. If you're concerned about something or if you think that you may need something, bring it with you. It doesn't matter. You could go to a campground with your vehicle right there. You could pack your vehicle full of blankets and sleeping pads or whatever it is that you want, and you could test out your gear that way. You hop inside of your tent, 
you could see if your sleeping bag can handle the temperature that you're at. Very, very simple. There's absolutely nothing wrong with starting slow, testing out your gear, and figuring out what works and what doesn't. Now next up, we need to talk about the fear of getting lost because this really is a very important one. This is something that happens all the time, all around the world. People do get lost, they go off trail, whatever. They get lost. It could happen to you. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I've been lost before. It happens. I've told this story before in previous overnight adventures, but I might as well just rehash it for you all. Years ago, I would say almost 10 years ago now, I was out in the Pisgah National Forest and I was doing some waterfall photography. So I was chasing down this waterfall I'd never been to before and I was on some crazy back road out in the middle of nowhere. So to make a long story short, I find the trailhead, I start hiking along and the trail is covered with downed trees and limbs from a previous winter storm. So I'm hiking along, I make my way down to the waterfall. It's beautiful, I'm taking some great shots. It's time for me to return. I turn around, where's the trail? I have no idea where the trail's at. And everything looks exactly the same. Nothing really stuck out to me as a landmark. I couldn't, I couldn't remember where to go. So I hiked down the creek a little bit, keeping in mind where I was lost at and how to get back to that point. Because where you're lost at is likely the closest point you are to the actual trail. So I go walking around, I come back, I cannot find it. So I will be honest, my heart was thumping a little bit. I was a little bit nervous. So what I did simply was that I sat down, I took a knee, and I just thought about things logically. Anytime that you get to a situation where you're concerned, you're worried, you're nervous, your heart starts pumping, adrenaline starts rushing through your body, your mind starts racing, that's a bad situation because you never wanna make decisions based on anxiety. You want to base your decisions on common sense, on well thought out decisions. So anytime you get in a situation like that, take a knee, just relax, right? Think about it. So anyway, I sat there for maybe 15 minutes thinking about the direction that I came, the landmarks that I saw. As I was sitting there, I realized that I was following this creek down, right? The entire way. That's how I made it down to this location. Well, if I followed the creek back up, I would make it up to the road, right? So this is what I did. I basically hiked up through the woods following the creek and never did find the trail again. But I came out onto the road maybe 200 yards away from my car. It was simple as that. Very easily, folks, I could have been in a panic and just rushed around, gotten even more lost, deeper to the forest, and yeah, I would have a search and rescue team on its way to find me eventually. So right there you have it, that is my most recent experience with getting lost. It does happen from time to time and it doesn't matter how good of a backpacker that you are. Now of course, things have changed quite a bit since then. GPS units work very, very well. They're also very inexpensive. We also have very good smartphones that have great GPS built right into them. And the GPS on your phone will work even when you don't have a signal. Now, let's talk about that for a moment. GPS units work great. They're very sensitive devices, but if you don't happen to have one of those, you can use your phone. If you are in an area that has very poor cell phone service, make sure to download the maps. There's plenty of apps out there. Let's see, I personally use the All Trails app. It is fantastic. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't care if you go out and subscribe to them or not. I personally do, and it really has been a godsend. It's a fantastic app. With that and many others, you can download the maps for the hikes that you're going on. You can actually see the trails that you're going to be following. You can see your position on those trails and it works online, offline. It doesn't matter. It's fantastic. What I recommend for most people is to have a GPS and use their phone. Oftentimes I will use both just in case, right? I'm sure you all have heard the saying before that one is none, two is one. And basically what that means is, is that you always have a backup. If you have one of something and it breaks, you're a freak, right? But if you have two, you have a backup. So there you go, that's where that comes from. I highly recommend that people go out, they learn how to read maps, how to use a compass and so on. But the truth is, most people that I've encountered on the trail have no idea how to do that. And I'm not gonna give people any crap for it. I understand, it takes time. Most people don't have time. So make sure that you have at least some good electronics with you. Do keep in mind that electronics do fail. So make sure you have a good backup. I always have my phone with me so I can take pictures and stuff like that, but also so I can talk to my wife whenever I can. She gets worried all the time. I always have a topographical map. I always have my compass. 
and it really depends. Sometimes I will have my GPS with me, sometimes I won't. It really depends on where I'm going and what the situation is. Without a doubt, I always have my compass, I have my map, and I have my phone GPS. Before moving on, we have to talk about getting lost when using the bathroom. Folks, this happens all the time, all the time. You step off trail to go use the bathroom to get some privacy, you can't find the trail again. Folks, be careful. I mean, be careful. That is an area where a lot of people get lost. So anytime that you step off trail, make sure that you know exactly 100% the way back. If you have to, take a stick, drag it on the ground so that you can leave a mark so you can make your way back. Of course, if you're using a GPS unit or maybe your phone or something like that, you can use a program to trace your steps back to the trail. No matter what, if you're going to step off the trail, you need to make sure that you can make your way back. I wanna beat that into your head, folks. If you step off the trail, make sure that you can get back to it. I cannot overstate that. If you step off the trail, make sure that you can get back to it. As you're hiking along, you will oftentimes come across game trails. That's not part of the trail that you're on. That's a game trail for deer or whatever. If something doesn't look right about the trail, you need to take a look at your map, right? You need to look at your GPS unit if you have one, your phone, whatever. This brings us to a very important point. Before you head out on any adventure, I highly recommend that you take your time and you research the trail backwards and forwards any way that you can. Get as much information about the trail that you're about to go on as possible. It is very important that you know everything about it. You need to know where the water sources are. You need to know where the trail may branch off at. Are you going that direction? Is that a different trail? You need to know. Most of this information you can find online. There are plenty of websites. Again, I'm going to throw out the All Trail website. Again, not affiliated with them at all, but it's a terrific resource. You can research the trail that you're about to take. You can get all sorts of information. You can ask questions. If you're going to a national park, you can always give a call to the ranger station. You can check on trail conditions and so on. It really is an important step that you have to do before you head out on your trip. Research, research, research. Make some phone calls if you need to. Research. It's very, very important. You know, a good example of this is when Susan and I were in Colorado last year hiking around in the Rockies, having an amazing time. Now, we did an overnight trip there at Cathedral Lake. I highly recommend it. Beautiful. Before we went on that trip, I researched the you-know-what out of it. I knew everything about that trail, including all the junctions and so on. So, folks, take the time research your trail, and be safe. Now here's a generalized tip in regards to knowledge, experience, gear, and so on. If you don't have any experience at all, start off slow. If you've never been on a backpacking trail before, find a trail in your area that's perfect for a day hike, maybe like a three mile loop, six mile loop, something like that. Head out onto that trail. This will give you a boatload of information on how to navigate trails, about the gear that you're carrying, and so on. Use those experiences to build yourself up for backpacking, for true exploring. By doing this, you will discover all sorts of things. You will discover how to navigate around obstacles, how to deal with animals and bugs and snakes and so on. Trust me folks, it will help a lot if you've never been out on the trail before. I receive a lot of messages from people who are out of shape, overweight, and a little bit concerned about hitting the trail. Folks, there's no better time than right now to get out, to start hiking, to start backpacking. Yes, you need to pick a trail, an adventure that's good for you, that's perfect for you. If you don't know what is good for you, head out for a day hike. That is my best advice. Hit a trail, start hiking, and carry your gear with you, even if you don't plan on staying the night. You know, you can find a loop trail in your area, maybe, like I said before, do three miles, do six miles, something like that. Carry your full loadout. You will get stronger. You will discover what works, what doesn't work. Maybe you need different shoes, who knows what. You will discover more about yourself while building endurance and stamina, which are very important for the outdoors. To enjoy your adventures, it's good to be in shape, it's good to be healthy and strong, but all that stuff will come in time. As you hit the trail, you start hiking, you will get there, my friends, you will get there. I can't help but smile because I received so many emails from you guys. And I tell you what, truly inspirational. I've received emails from people who have overcome weight issues. I've, I've received emails from people who have overcome disabilities. Uh, it, it's truly awesome stuff, it really is. The outdoors 
truly is worth it. So don't delay, go ahead and grab your bag and head out now. Of course, be smart, do what's right for you and your body. Once you're on the trail, you will quickly discover how to work with your issues, your disabilities, and so on. Talking about disabilities, I broke my back in two places when I was younger. My back hurts all the time, but I've learned to deal with it. I've learned to work with it and not against it. You will do the same for your issues. Some people are afraid of storms, lightning, all that good stuff. And the truth is, if you're going to go into the outdoors, you are going to face weather. There's going to be rain. There's going to be storms. Sometimes there's hail. Sometimes there's flooding. In my adventures, which I've shared with you all, you guys have seen all of it. I've had just about every encounter that you can possibly imagine, except for a hurricane and tornado. And the risk there isn't that bad. Let's talk about Colorado since my wife and I were just out there backpacking not too long ago. Annually, there's roughly 50,000 lightning strikes in Colorado. Every single year, roughly three people are killed. Three people. It's a rarity. Getting struck by lightning is a rarity. It does happen. The odds of getting struck by lightning is very, very small. Very, very small. If you're on top of a mountain above the tree line, try to get down before the storm hits. And once the storm hits, it really is up to you. Everybody has to make their own decision on what they're going to do. So some people say they're going to pitch their tent and get inside. Some people say they're going to haul it and go. You have to make that call. I'm not telling you what to do. I've been in situations where I've done both. And so far it's worked out well. Next time it may not. Anytime that you head out into the outdoors, there is a real risk out there. There's a risk. If you go outside of your house, there's a risk. If you stay inside of your house, there's a risk of something happening. That's life. That's how it goes. If you start to panic, calm down. Think about what you're going to have for dinner. Think about who knows what, whatever you want to. Don't think about the storm. Don't panic. Don't make rash decisions. That's very important. I think this is what you need to keep in mind if you're a first timer and you've never been out on the trail before. You're going to get scared. You're going to get nervous. The bumps in the night are going to worry you. But ultimately, the more time that you have out on the trail, the more dirt time that you get under your belt, as your experiences grow, and as you get more dirt time under your belt, you will quickly realize that the fears inside of your head don't really match up with real life. Most people go out backpacking, hiking, and never have an issue, just like myself. I've been out my entire life, I've never had an issue, and I don't think you all will either. Common sense is your friend, and I think you have to remember that. Never make a rash decision. Think everything through. Make sure that you have the right gear and know-how. For most people, the know-how part will come in time. To make things even safer on your adventure, go with someone else. You do not have to go out backpacking by yourself like I do. I love to go out backpacking by myself. For me, it's an amazing way to think and ponder my problems, my issues, and to come up with solutions and so on. If you're nervous, if you're scared, go out with someone else. Something to keep in mind is that you always need to let someone know where you are headed. Always. That way, if you don't come home by a certain time, they can send people out looking for you, just in case. If you get lost, stay where you're at. Most people are found within one mile of the trail. Did you know that? Wait for someone to get you. Make sure you have a whistle or a way to make a large noise. Make sure that you can signal for help somehow. That's why it's so important to let people know where you are at. When you hit the trail for the first time, it's not going to be easy. You're going to be going uphill, downhill, you're gonna be sweating, you're carrying this heavy pack. It's going to be hard, but I promise you, in time, it will become fun. It will. I will say this one more time because it really needs to be said, stay on trail. Do not go off trail. Do not cut switchbacks. Stay on the trail. So everyone, this pretty much wraps up this episode. I hope it has helped those, especially new timers, getting comfortable with the outdoors. I tell you what, folks, you have to get out. There's nothing like it. Being in the outdoors truly is my passion in life. It's my hobby. It's what I do for a living. I love it. It, it really is special. I think you guys will love it too. You know, you can see the comments. You can see the interactions with everybody else. They love it as well. You will love it. Start slow, do what's right for you. Build upon your knowledge and experiences. That's my best advice. There is always that risk out there, but you can minimize that. You can. With my channel here, I have over 50 overnight adventures. Most are about an hour long, so you guys can watch those. You'll find a link down below to a playlist. 
you will find adventures which have taken place all around the country, all sorts of different situations, tons of advice in each of those. If you guys have any questions for me personally, feel free to email me. Until next time, everyone. Strength and honor. See you guys around. Be safe out there, everybody.